Okay. Yeah, it is. Yes. Um, how long uh, did you you grew up in Chicago? I'm guessing. West Side. West. Oh, okay. So that, okay, okay. <laughs> I've been learning about Chicago, okay. and uh, if I understand correctly, South Side is like city black folk, and West Side is like country black folk. Okay. Um, a little bit of both. Uh, just as West Side is real, you know what? Kind of, sort of. What you're saying is great because the West Side is like kind of condensed, so you know some of everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, it's if you've been over there for more than 15, if you even stay over there 10 years, you're going to end up seeing some of the same people around because it's real, like, sectored off if you really know how the city works. And then the South Side is just so broad. Mm-hmm. So, is it what? Where's this? There's a song. I, I don't know if it was Isaiah Rashad, but it was a song about, I think it was Isaiah Rashad, about how, no, 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 no Saba. You know Saba? I'm um, not familiar. Uh, the, the Essentially that when people think of Chicago and black people in Chicago, they think of the South Side, but they kind of ignore. Like the, the West Side and everything else? Yeah, what is that? Because the South Side is like, like I said, it's broader mm. when it comes to black Chicago. Like, it's more, I mean, the West Side is its own thing, but the South Side is its own thing, too. It's just because it's bigger. Okay. Pretty much. That's what it is. It's like. An O Block. Yeah. That's, I keep hearing about fucking O Block. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's become a tourist attraction. That is so crazy to me. Is it getting gentrified, or is it no. ju- people just no, drive no, through there? just drive through there, and you, <laughs> it, it, you know what? They know in this city, you, the the powers that be mess around, be like, hey, we can make some money off of this. And they f- fuck around and do gentrify it or something like that. Yeah. But it would take a lot of, no, trust me, you go over there, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see this big tall ass gate with these buildings in the inside of it. It looks like you shouldn't be going in there, which is the absolute truth. Don't go in there. Don't go to Oprah. Unless you know somebody and don't, you have no, I wouldn't even go in there to Uber Eats. I've, been over there doing lift, and I dropped a person outside the gate. Like, listen, I'm across the street. I only park on the same side of the street as those buildings, because it's this big ass maze. When you get in there, yeah, it's some shit off a movie or whatever, and it's like, okay. And I'm like, I'm like, they're like, they're like, yeah, go through. I'm like, I don't want. Listen, you got, I'll call. You gonna have to come to the gate, man. I'm like, I'm not coming up in here. God shit. damn. Okay. Yeah. So when people think of, I was talking to, uh, do you know Ty Riggs? Yeah, I was talking to him about that. The stigma of Chicago. When people are thinking of Chicago, they're thinking of O Block. Mm. Uh, it seems like that's the newer, that's the newer generation. Okay, yeah, that's that generation Z. Just because they're more into like the hip hop and the little Dirk and stuff now, and the Chief Keef that came around like in the O nine between O mm. nine and now. Um, so that whole lit decade of drill music and stuff, people are very, you know, you think hip hop in the last ten years. You cannot not think of drill music. Drill music comes from Chicago. Mm-hmm. So and most of those guys come from over there. So it's like, okay, you had Chief Keith then. He had his tenure then. He's still around, but you know he's not as popular. And then here is Lil Durk is like this guy now. And he's bringing back up the popularity of Old Block. Mm. So it was always there. It kind of, it was there at a height. It had its height. Then it kind of went down. And you thought it was going to fade because you didn't think that like Dirk or Reese or, or G Herbo or them were going to kind of come. Then all of a sudden, you got two of the guys, G Herbo and Dirk, from there mm-hmm. that's kind of mainstream now. That's familiar names, you know, and due to social media. And so so you grew up west side of Chicago, yep. and and then you got into comedy. How? Man, um, honestly, trying to help a friend out who's always saying he wants to be a comic. Uh-huh. But then... It's crazy because, so I've been in entertainment for a long time. I sing. Hmm. So I sing a song, right? You seem like you've been in a choir. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what everybody said, and then I hate that because I was, but I just felt my voice in there. Like, okay. I, but I started, you know, just being real. R. Kelly, I heard him in an interview, uh-huh. and uh, he's like, your best material is your own material. So when he said that, that pushed me into the songwriting. And my first songs was nothing of, you know, no church or anything like that. I was, you know, I was on some, uh, I call it Beyonce stuff because Beyonce, if you listen to her around 17, 18, she's talking about stuff that a 17, 18 year old should not have been dealing with 
But I had that type of. Oh, sorry, man. You're good, you're good. I had that type of. Was that um, Ghostbusters? No, that's Axel Foley, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Beverly Hills Cup. Yeah. Okay, it makes more sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, I was, man, writing stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, I got this. You know, I could. I was always that um, dancing. Mm-hmm. Michael ja- grew up off Michael Jackson. And uh, always really been a student of comedy. I never, man, I'm talking about nights. I would never go to sleep. So this all this makes sense now. One that went to sleep, I would stay up, watch Def Comedy Jam, Comedy View, Richard Pryor, One Night Stand, everything with um, oh, what's this guy's name? Um, got George Carlin. Mm. I used to see George Carlin all the time. Comic Relief when they had Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams. Was in, I just used to watch all this stuff and crack up, and I would always imper- do impersonations. Mm. And uh, but like I say, more toward what you asked me, um, trying to help a friend. We always crack jokes with each other. Hey, how you doing? Think about this. And he's like, man. And I say, you know what? Go ahead and go up there, man. Like I say, listen, let's both choose a night. We both go up. I don't give a fuck if they boo me. I just want you to go up. And he's like, oh, man, I can't do it. So I'm sitting around one night, and I'm just like, I'm bored as fuck. And I'm like, fuck it. Google. Try to find out where our open mic was. Went down to Comedy Bar. Yeah. Went down to Comedy Bar. Um, Real early, I uh, got this ticket from this lady. Then I, she said, yeah, just to start this time, come back. Well, actually, she I, she put me on the list. I left, came back, and they didn't have me on the list. So she's like, well, I said, there was a lady with these glasses. So she come, oh, yeah, he was here early. He was like one of the first ones. So she's like, you know what? Take this ticket, go in the back. This is, you bump people or whatever. So I'm like, okay. And everybody, like, oh, you got a ticket. So I went in the back. So it was like, like 30 names there. But this ticket allowed me to be like number seven yeah. on stage. So I'm like, Joe, I'm doing this. And I'm like, okay. And I, it, so me touching the mic for the first time on the comedy side came from me being bored one night, pretty much. And it's this calling saying, you're so help, tri- busy trying to help this guy. What if this is for you? Mm. I'm like, you know you can do this. You know, I could have mic sing and all that stuff like that. And I've been on, you know, I'm like, dude, it's hard as singing. You already had stage presence. Yeah, I was stage presence pretty much. So that was it. How long ago did you start? Um, I started in 15. 2015. Yep. Okay. Seven, almost seven. Ooh, okay, okay. Almost seven. I had a team. I was I was consistent, non-consistent. Then I started getting consistent again. Then these last couple of years are just like uh, family, stuff like that, and, and just wasn't inspired. Then I had to think about it like, come on, man, this is what you do. Like, Ooh. come on. So got out of that funk and just been super consistent ever since. And Good for you. It's working out for me. So... Okay, so the goal isn't to be a professional singer. You trying to do, but you trying to be Eddie Murphy. You want to do I both. Am, I, Party listen, all the I time. I believe I can do all of it. Okay. You no, know, I, 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 I haven't went into my bag yet. Truthfully, mm. as far as comedy, but I'm bringing the music to it soon. Okay. It's just when I get that time to do it. When I, when I get my first fifteen and a half, I'm coming with it. And mm. so it wasn't a thing at first, but all the people that know I can sing, like, why haven't you done this on stage yet? You can do it, and I'm like. In due time, so it's a time and place for everything. I look forward to seeing that. Okay. <laughs> um, speaking speaking of seeing you on stage, I so when I'm in, I, I don't I don't I don't think we've see, I don't think I've seen you on the north side much. No. Okay. So no. when I see you, it's in the south side. Yeah. And when I'm in the south side, I'm in my own head. Okay. So no problem. I, <laughs> no problem. I get it. As of recent, I I'm coming to this place of of understanding myself and being more comfortable in my own skin. Okay. And so being able to like hang out and pay attention to other things i'm getting there but i don't i i it's i don't remember having a specific interaction with you when i first moved out there just over time i was like i recognize i just recognize you right was there a moment that we met do you know um just niche room okay just niche room and they kept, uh, she kept saying something about, somebody kept saying something about the boots you had on or whatever like that. Oh, that was the and first I, night. That was a- and I had walked in on your set. <laughs> I had walked in on your set, so I'm laughing. Then you went and sat down, and they were like, complimenting you, but then they, on yeah. the next set, then they kept saying something about your boots. So I'm like, why do you keep talking about his boots? I'm like, okay. So then, I like I said, I walked in your set, so what I heard of, I was like, good, man. You know, I always compliment. Yeah. I'm not a head. So, no, if I, if I. I mean, if I was shit, yeah, then, yeah. No, I, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'll still say good set, but you'll know if I really mean it, and I put you like that. So I heard you, and I'm like, oh, it was, no, no, it was dope as fuck. I'm like, good set, man. So you just like, 
Oh, thank you. You know, whatever like that. And that was the first time I met you. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. Then then you were there the first time I did stand up in the South Side. And, yeah, that was. I think you mentioned that, too. When you was in. Yeah. You said it was the first time being out South and everything. Yeah. Woo. It's different. You made it, man. You, you made it. <laughs> you, you, you're, official, you're official to Chicago now. You made it. You got home safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man. Well, it's. it's And this is. I mean, I like I like bouncing between the two because they're, they're different mm -hmm. vibes. Different crowd vibes. Um, we were just talking about that like um, yesterday, actually, or I was talking about that recently. Like, uh, you go and you get a different like North Side is its own experience, and then you do South or West, you get a little mix, but it's a different experience. And you see them looking at you, and they like. Okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. Which is why people mention that Chicago is one of the hardest places. We just don't believe that, or some people just don't believe because they haven't really traveled yet to see it. But once you do it, then you know for sure, like, man, because then you, I used to think New York was mm -hmm. the hardest. And it's like, no, it's Chicago, trust me. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, they're lighter in New York than here? But then I told people, it hit me, I told people years ago, Chicago has become the new New York. We took, yeah. We took, remember, we sit, it was, what's New York's slogan? The city that never sleeps. Yes. We took that over about probably like seven years ago. Easy. Really? Chicago never sleeps. Look at us, man. <laughs> Look at us. We were probably just somewhere a little while ago. We got right up and we're doing this. Now, yeah. I was just laughing at right? I'm right here now. Yeah. I haven't slept much. It, I didn't even stop. I'm, I've been up. I just kept looking at the clock. What the fuck am I finna do? Went back to sleep. What the fuck am I finna do? And like, get up because your body's not going to let you sleep. Yeah, it is Sunday. We're supposed to, this is the day of rest and we are not resting. No. Yeah. It, we don't know rest. We're com comedians, so. That's what I love about, and it, it, man, my gut was telling me Chicago so bad. Yeah. Um, And everyone was like, don't do it, man. You're going to get killed out there. Don't do it, man. Now, I forget. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from California. See, yeah. See, you was already <laughs> out. You're part of the diamond. The diamond. What's the diamond? I got this thing where I call it the diamond. Like Chicago, if you um, conquer Chicago, New York, and L.A., mm. then if you get buzz in all three of those places, there's no way you fail. Right. No right. way you fail because you got buzz in all three of the main places. So now you have people that are like within that are in the business, whether they're writers or whoever, that might know you. And there's there's people from here that are like. They got picked up from the comedy bar. They got moved out to New York to write mm -hmm. for SNL and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I believe um, I can't think of that one lady name. Um, she's a Caucasian actor. She always be with the lady with the blonde hair. There's a lot of those out there. Uh, no, they were in the Anchorman. Oh, 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 oh. Her and the other lady. I can't think of her fucking name. Oh, uh, she's from here. I just know she's from here, and mm -hmm. she was a person from the comedy bar. And uh, that was a comedian. They moved out to New York, and everything else is history for her. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's. I well, first off, I wasn't from LA. Okay, I'm I'm from Rivers. I'm from a desert. Okay, and and so that was why I left. I was. Shit. It was terrible. Well, you you from a desert? A desert, yeah, desert suburb, yeah. A desert suburb. Okay, you know, okay, in, the, in California. In California. Okay. All right. Have you been to California? I have, but not I, not to get, really get the California vibe. Like, I was in and out. This shit is like 80% desert. Okay. And um, people go to the parts. It's sort of like when you were describing O-Block. It's like, okay. this is a particular part of Chicago that people perceive. But then there's Lakeview, and there's Boys Town, gotcha. and there's Pilsen. Gotcha. So, where I'm from, here's the best way I could describe it. Um, you've seen Breaking Bad? Yeah. Okay. Riverside, Breaking Bad was based off of Riverside, not oh. uh, New New Mexico. Okay. And then you know the opening of Get Out when uh, Lakeith Stanfield's walking through that the the neighborhood and he Hell gets yeah, and it's dark as fuck. That's yeah. where I'm from. Excuse me, I'm sorry for Nick. You can, you can. Uh, <laughs> probably Nick a thousand times already. I'm sorry. No, you good. About it. Yeah, this uh, is going on YouTube. Right, no, right, fuck. Okay. Um, but but that is where I'm from. Okay. That feeling like it's it's. Not a fun feeling. I'm still working through the trauma. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you were Bane in your own little way from Batman. <laughs> yes, I was born you, in the you, darkness. Yeah, you were born in the You are Bane. Like, you're out yeah. now. It's like, you're wreaking havoc in the comedy world. You, yeah. you come to wreak havoc in the comedy world. You're getting over it and like, okay. I'm, man, I've never been so happy in my life hey, I'm out here. Yeah, you I'm know. glad you, hey, come on. Hey, listen, there's plenty of love here, man. Yeah. Uh, it's, I hate when people be like, oh, Chicago, just like, listen. It's shit everywhere. 
this the media is gonna do what they're gonna do. I've been the plenty of cities has been some shit, mm. you know, and we know we're no different. But when I tell you, on the opposite end of all the foolishness, there's a lot of love here. It is. Um, so it feels like uh, it feel it kind of when I when I go to like bartend or, or laugh therapy, I need to go to more Southside. Mm-hmm. Please, man, we got to link up and go okay. places because I don't have a car. Okay. Um, okay. I'll give you some gas money. Okay. But it feels like having an older brother make fun of you and punch you, but mm-hmm. then but then be like, okay, now here's how you defend yourself. Yeah. Again, and it, it there there is a it's there's a sense of love and care that yeah, because they're gonna get you right. The thing is, we have to go through that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you familiar with Ballhead Phillips? Phillips? <laughs> no. Okay, so his name is he's comedian Ballhead. Everyone Phillips. got nicknames out here. Yeah, right? he, no, yeah, yeah, I know, right? But he's 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 heavy in the game. Okay. Uh, really connected. Um, you look at him; he's this. He's very to the point. Yeah, yeah he's. You go to see Francis. He's Francis on Tuesday. So that's his. Oh, like, okay. Marlon okay. Mitchell, Francis, uh, ball hit. And you see him, and he's the ultimate heck, like heckler, comedian. Like, if you're not funny, oh. he's going to let you. You're going to know. But I, I call him. I just talked to him Thursday at Just Niche Room. And I say, I call you Simon Kyle. And he looked at me. And I say, You're the Simon Kyle of comedy. Because. When I was singing, I said, I understand how this business. Simon was the best thing you could ever see on TV because he's exactly what the business is. Mm. He didn't hide it. So everybody's like, oh, he's so mean. No, he's exactly what you're going to experience. He's just giving it to you in the wrong. You know, oh, yeah, well, no, it this and then the Paul Abdul was the nice one. Yeah. And then the other, oh, uh, the Randy, hey, hey, dude, dude, you know, this <laughs> and this. You know, you kind of. I've dealt with all of those people. So they're like the yeah. the music business com- summarized in human beings. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And I believe I think all, entertainment period. Yeah. I think entertainment period. I don't think I think it goes beyond that because I've been some. It, it, if I can talk about one experience, I, I did American Idol. I've done American Idol twice. Okay. So there's rounds before you make it to TV, which shows you how full of nonsense it is. Because right. you see other some of these people making TV like, how the hell, if they, they're around, how did they make it? They picked the worst possible. <sighs> it, it's all for like, it's, it, this was the likes of getting the version of getting likes before likes was a thing on social media. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? We're watching it in TV form, but now it's social media. So, you get there and they're liking all these crazy people. And this one year, the year I got the furthest, it was the year um, Fantasia won. Okay. When Fantasia won, it was the year I got the furthest. So I made it from the first round, got to the second. They had me in the second round for a while. Well, the second, so you go through a, it was one tier of producers, then you go to another tier of producers. The actual the second tier of producers, they don't tell you, are actually the people who run the show. Mm. So they run it. So they're over really Simon and them. So these are like the producers. These are like, and. I'm there, so this one produ- really wanted me to go on to the TV point of it. And other guy was like, just that look, that whole Hollywood. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you're what we're looking for. So I'm like, what is it you're looking for? See, that's the thing we don't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, so I'm like, what do you want me to sing? So they made me sing like two more songs real quick, like 15 seconds or whatever. And they're going at it at each. Oh, that's the no, he did. And the one guy that really wanted me, he's like, "Look, man, I'm sorry we couldn't come to an agreement. I'm gonna have to pass." He's like, "Man, I want you to keep at it. I really wanted you, my colleague here didn't." I'm just like, Shh. "But that's part of it, you know what I'm saying?" So it's a fickle, grimy business. Yeah. What is your strategy? Like you, you, you present yourself very crisp. Okay. You have a um. I know you. You. You seem like a. a I know you probably don't like this and get all this a lot, but like a pastor, like a, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you get this all the time. Yeah, man. I don't know where they come, you know, and I do a good impersonation of one. <laughs> it's, <I> do, <laughs> it's the, you're clean, man. You're, yeah. you, 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 you clearly take care of the way you present yourself. Yeah. I'm the opposite of you in style. You know what, man? This is going to sound crazy. Okay. I used to, I'm talking about Levi wide leg jeans, yeah. skateboard. All that shit. I still can, man. What? The, I'm telling you. And then, I don't know. It's like, I, I, I'll switch up real quick. Yeah. It's like, so you see me like this, and I will, like, what I think when I reach a point, I'm going to go right back to that. Yeah. Like, I think I'm just this for whatever reason right now, but 
Man, this is a I phase you're in in your life. I, yeah, I don't even know if it's that. I don't get me wrong. I like fashion. Yeah, I like the shit out of fashion. But once I get to the point where I'm really like, I th- peace for me is being like uh, Tom Hanks and Castaway, <laughs> like having that big thumb ass beard and yeah. shorts and. And using the spirit to catch my fish and shit and not really having to work, you know, think yeah. about this shit anymore or whatever like that and just chill and grow my own food and shit like that. For real. I'm the- <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to have a garden. Yeah, yeah, man, okay. yeah, man. I'm serious. I'm serious. Like Thanos when he was just a piece of he's <laughs> picking the fruit after he then tore up 50% of the fucking... <laughs> he did the job, man. I'm like, this big bald bastard here, you didn't... <laughs> If you didn't delete it, fifty percent of existence, and you went and picked some fucking fruit right yeah, out. Yeah, chilling. Got some. Got, got a chicken coop yeah, in, in space. You know what type of badass you got to be? For? I say, hey, this is this shit is crazy. So, so this is you, but this is a part of you that you're presenting yeah, purposefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got sides, man. Everybody got sides. I mean, it more as I be on stage, the more it comes out. Uh-huh. I get, you know, we get comfortable up there, and it's, and I, I but I want, I know. People are like each version, each side mm-hmm. of what they see. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I feel like I'm a approachable guy. I feel like I'm a people person. Uh, the clean cut thing, like I said, it's you. I don't know, man. You watching movies and shit like that, and you see a certain part. Like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Then you learn you can pull off some stuff, but then some stuff you're like, okay, I'll pull this off. To, you know. It's, I that's think. It. I think what I. I think. I for me personally, I'm. I just don't. That's not what I care about. Like you know, when you walked in and they were going on my my shoes. I've heard that since uh, middle school. Mm-hmm. Oh, this nigga Aaron got the light up Skechers. This nigga, oh, like, and it's it's like, well, I just don't care about. That's not something that's not on my mind. Right. And I think what is what I do appreciate about the North Side is they don't care how you dress. Hell no, at all. No, you know, everyone looking goofy as fuck up there. Right. When I go to the South Side, I'm, there's a piece of me that's like, man, if I don't listen, don't do the same shit. Because they don't care how they dress out there. They fucking, I mean, well, I'm, hey, it's real. It jeans out there, ass, yeah, underwear yeah, showing. Yeah. I don't want to see your fucking underwear <laughs> or whatever. You I sound like I, a sixty year old white dude. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> white dude, like I don't matter. You see it everywhere now. It's just like okay, sagging is really, really further, you know, more expanded than people think. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, fashion. Nobody gets like. So, what is your strategy in this this grimy game? How are you going about? Getting to a point where you can live off of this is what I assume your goal is. Yeah, um, because I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I don't do good with bosses. Yeah, like I'm not the one that wakes up and clock thing. I do it because I kind of have to, but I'm working. I know I have what it takes to get out of that phase of life and be able to. Okay, when's this show and mm-hmm. travel here and okay, get a check, you know, to do a half an hour, an hour and be like, okay, I can go shopping and eat and stuff now. You know? Yeah, I know I got that. Um, strategy wise, um, be myself, be myself, um, and think of, remember every experience I've been through. I think everything has everything that has happened to me. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about everything has happened for a reason. Um, whether it was tragic. Whether it was um, elevating, everything has happened for a reason. And um, it's pushed me. Mm-hmm. It's pushed me. It's challenged me. Um, it's put me in rooms I didn't think I would be in, even when there was tragedy, you know what I mean? And uh, some stuff has been test, you know, test. And uh, my strategy is, like I said, first and foremost, just, some, just keep being yourself. Don't change because it's going to. Be a lot around you that make you think you need to change but no you were no the authentic to be authentic is the business that's why people come to see you because you are not afraid to be authentic mm-hmm. you know it's so much in this you know i feel like it's so much whether it's through media or whatever that makes a person want to change something in them or you know whatever like that but then it's like i'm like this you got to go home at night yep you gotta look in the mirror. You gotta lay down. You gotta close your eyes, and you're alone with your thoughts. And it seems like when you go to sleep, you those last couple minutes before you go into that sleep, you know what you're thinking about, but you don't know what's gonna come in your dreams or whatever. And and you gotta think about. I think we it goes through our dreams like this all the stuff we alternate ourselves so what people do you know kind of change about themselves no that's not me and I think if you're in touch with your spirit your spirit kind of lets you know that's not you 
That's not you. If you're really in tune with your spirit, your spirit's going to let you know, like, I'm not down with this. Like, come on. I want to definitely get into that. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's why I wrote uh, things down. Uh -huh. I definitely want to get into the authenticity in your spirit and who you are. But before I do that, you touched on something that felt ominous that I need to dig into. Come on. You said uh, things that have happened to you that are tragic. I feel like you're thinking of something. Does something ha Is there like a couple of moments in your life that kind of led you down the path that you're at? Mm. When you say tragic, are you picturing something right now that has happened? I mean, my mom passed last year. I'm sorry to hear COVID, that. So she passed. Uh, that was my best everything. Mm. Um, she um, was the sweetest person I know with the strongest person I know. She was this little hundred and, you know, 20-something pound lady. Mm. Um, loved to go downtown. Loved to shop. Uh, she was a nurse. Uh, she retired a nurse uh, here at... Uh, uh, Stroger Hospital uh, it was Cook County back in the day. It was when she retired. But um, just you don't think about it in the moment sometimes. But like those last couple of days, you're looking like this is one of the strongest people I've ever met that I've been around this entire time. And I I saw you know you saw the love, but you didn't really see the extent of how their strength went. And I saw that, and that really pushed me that pushed me more than anything and I'm like Shh, dude like she was you know like in weird ways we see things you know what I mean I'm like this woman was really strong and think of, and she was giving you all these keys and that's what it was like yeah I mean that I lost my dad at 18 um, my dad uh, fought to get me when I was younger so uh, he uh, got me and you know he's my dad was old my dad had me like 59 so he yeah, oh shit yeah so he's like north and from north carolina so he's back in times where shit was like that real shit was going on in life like segregated you can't drink out of this shit all yeah. that shit so he he remembers some of that shit as a kid and um you know he's trying to bring me up a certain type of way and i always say this my mother used to say no he's not i used to think he was i'm like that racist <laughs> Cause uh, and I used to think I said I would kind of understand it if he is he's North Carolina around that time, shit and he you know uh, wore and all that stuff. She's like no he's not racist this and this. But I'm not gonna I'm the first t first person I learned to wear hunky from because he said God damn hunky. I'm like what is that? <laughs> then I found out what it, I, he called Brett Favre a hunky. He's like I don't like the <laughs> I never forget <laughs> watching football one day. I don't like the hunky and the red hunky and redneck. I learned from my dad. I'm like what is that? And, you know, yeah. <laughs> like. That guy right there, that's what that is. So I'm like, and he talking about, and like, he can't be talking about all of them. So he never really, like, kind of said, hey, no, it's not all. He just said, that guy right there is this. So I'm like, that ain't cool, man. <laughs> like, it, it seems like you've had, and you seem like you've had a pretty warm upbringing. Yeah. The, the, you, do you have brothers and sisters? Yep. And are they all kind of affable like you, or? Okay, so. Uh oh, real quick, shit. <laughs> real quick. So my dad, I'm not, so my dad, the mother I speak about, I lost is protecting my stepmom. Okay. So my birth mother, me and husband have a great relationship. We still have, she's alive. But my dad brought me up with my stepmother. Uh, so my stepmom was the one that was there that taught me curse. She taught me everything about this city. Mm -hmm. Everything I know is, a, everything I know about this city is because of her. And she was a big historian on Chicago. Uh, but uh, yeah, when my dad got custody of me, man, it was like, how we just mentioned well, coming from old block to you know the 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 the, the, the you know the good <laughs> good part of town that yeah. it's crazy because you like okay where were you at i was still out west it was just my mom's side of the family wasn't that pleasant you know my birth Ooh. mother's side of the family wasn't that pleasant at that time and uh my dad knew it and he was just like i'm gonna get you yeah. you know whatever i gotta do so when he got me um i was the best day of my life you know when he passed a lot of people came up to me. Uh, some officers, couple, man, your dad really loved you. I didn't know. I didn't even know these people, hmm. but they were just like, man, he went through a lot to get you, man. He's a good guy, and uh, yeah, they made sure I was good. I was kind of, I, they, he tried to shelter me. You know, I was very, he was super overprotective, and I was just talking about this. Ah, oh, shit, man, yeah. super. Or oh, I had street lights. These street lights come on, be in the house, all this stuff, and I'm like, okay. 
but you're sending me downtown to these classes. I can get on the train. It was it's some of the stuff that makes sense. I can get on a train by myself as a, as a teenager, a young teen, to go downtown to these gifted art classes because I, I got a photographic memory. And I used to go to these, uh, this um, place called Marvin, which was a gifted people, students rather. Um, and um, But then when it comes to me hanging outside, mm-hmm. I got to be in a certain time. But I be getting on, I'm like, and this is during school. We got to go down there after school. I'm like, hey, I don't get this. And then you're this stuff that you had me doing it between 9 and 13, now I'm getting like 15 and 16, and I'm still going to court, and I'm like, hey, man, and uh, I, I'm beyond, I snapped out. He was just like, looked at me. My dad was real cool. We, My dad, I can count on three fingers how many times my dad ever put his hands on me in my tenure of, you know, him being around, and uh, he was real, like, cool. He just looked at me. He said, you need like one of those things where you're done? And I'm like, what's the problem? And I was just like, oh, you're doing this and this. And I'm the one yelling and all this stuff. And he's like, just calm down. What's going on? I'm like, oh, you. And we'll talk. You know, that was the best. That's that's why I think I'm like I am. Mm. I'll, we'll, I'm so willing to talk if there's a issue or anything. I, violence is not my first act of business. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay. Or it's not my first, you know, thing to go to. And because uh, he put that in me. Like, mm. you could talk. As much as he used to yell about stuff, then they, he talked. And he's like, okay, I didn't get that part. I didn't understand that. And I learned that through him. So, yeah, getting with them, I, I had a, oh, well, when in the household, don't get me wrong, my siblings, all my, so I have two older sisters my dad have. Now, mind you, I told you he had me at 59. Mm-hmm. So, do you, I mean, you got time? You want me to break down my history of what I am? Hey, man, this okay, is. Okay, okay, so this is what <laughs> Okay, this is what happened. Okay. My dad and my stepmother okay. had something go on to where they separated for two years. They separated for two years. My dad met my mom, and I happened. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's how I came about. And then my dad got back with my stepmother, and he let her know, hey, this he's on the way. This happened while we were separated for two years. Yeah. So... Once just one of the displays of my mom, my stepmother's strength. So she's like, okay. So she never treated me like I was anything less than a son to her, you know. And I'm like, man, it has, and as like older I got, I started thinking about that. That has to take a lot of strength. Then I found out some stuff, and I'm like, okay, part of the separation because of her, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, right, right, right. <laughs> I saw, you know, automatically we think it's the guy. Like my dad must did something. No, it was something she did. And my dad had this. He, he, I guess he felt a certain type of way. It was like, no, we need to be apart and this and this. Uh, and that happened weirdly. I, I'll tell you about that on the side. But uh, how I found out it was her. Yeah. Uh, my dad passed away, and I was cleaning out some of his stuff, and I found this letter. My stepmother taught me how to write cursive. So I found this letter, and I thought it was mine. So I'm reading I'm like, this isn't mine. And I'm reading it. It was a letter she wrote him back then. About, oh, I know you think this and this happened, and so and so. So, so I'm like, oh, shit, this is what happened. Yeah. So I stumbled upon that. She don't know I saw that letter, but I saw it. And it wasn't nothing real descriptive, but it was just like my dad probably, I mean, he. It was clear she it, did. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, or he, he had reason to believe she went and, yeah, so um, stepped out on him. So he was just like, you know, I happened. They got back together, and um, let's see. Like I said, my I had two. My dad has two older daughters, which are my sisters. Okay. So same mom. Same my stepmom. Yeah, my stepmother. Okay. These okay. Are my stepmother's mm. daughters and my dad's. So these are my stepsisters, but you know, obviously. So right. So I come along at fifty nine. It's fifty nine now. He's fifty nine years old. Yeah. Having a son coming in. They're way older. They're grown, grown. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So my nieces are older than me. Mm-hmm. One of my <laughs> sisters. My one of my sister has two daughters. Both of them older than me. Mm-hmm. Then one of them has a daughter, which is my great niece. She's under me, and she has a daughter, which is my greatest niece. Right? Is, is that I what know. you call it? Greatest? Yeah, greatest. Yep. I okay. looked it up. It's my greatest niece. Right? Yeah. So that's my dad's side. My birth mother okay. side of the family. I have two brothers under me. I have one sister over me. Mm-hmm. Two brothers under me, and one youngest sister. Okay. Right. So, 
Now, as far as like the talent and everything that happens, my brother under me, ah, uh, this dude, I I just say this, he's had a halo over his head his entire life. It's just like coming up here and what he was, because my two brothers came up in like a group home yeah. uh, for a certain tenure of their life, and then they ended up going and staying with family finally. And when they did that, I, I that was when we got to really, you know, bond more since I ended up going with my dad, you know. Um, cause we had all have separate different fathers and, um, yeah, my brother under me, man, um, we're both CDL holders. So we've had our CDLs for like 13, maybe a long time now. We're truck drivers, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah, that's what I do outside the comedy. I mean, I don't drive trucks anymore on the road, but I mean, I still have my CDL, but, um, this dude has had a halo. It's just like, you have to, you ever seen one of those people that you knew was going I'm, I'm, and I tell him this so he can't say shit. You knew this dude was going to jail at some point. The shit he was doing, yeah. and for some reason he never gets caught. And he's like, how? And it, get, it makes you tempted to do this shit. Like he gets away with it every single time. How do you? Do? I've watched this dude. The rawest shit I ever seen this dude is walk out of Walmart with. Remember the Nintendo GameCube? Of course. He put it in his pants. How the hell do you get out of the Walmart with a Nintendo GameCube yeah. in your sweatpants? He wore some big dumbass sweatpants. <laughs> like back this, <laughs> this is back like uh, <laughs> this is like uh during the time of uh, I guess with Chingy and Luke, 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 oh, yeah. Ludacris first tenure with the braids. Of and course. Stuff like that when the big Gina Holly, you know, soldier boy and, I, and I'm like, he's wearing these big ass sweatpants. And he's like, I'm going to get me a GameCube today. And I'm like, okay. So we go in there, and he and, and this is when I guess Walmart was sweet. They they had there wasn't no glass cases at this point. It was just sitting on boxes. They were just trusting and, you. Yeah, there was yeah, there was just <laughs> this level of trust. Yeah, he's and, the reason why we have glass yeah, cases. Yeah, yes, he, it's him. Yeah, I've watched him take a GameCube like that. I watched him take an Xbox controller just like he shook the box. Said, oh, these people crazy. <laughs> like, he'd always go out to the burbs and do. That. I watched him steal like seven hundred dollars worth of food. I was talking about out of jewels and shopping carts. Just walk out with them in the yeah. middle of the night at a 24 hour jewels and get away with the shit. So I'm like, you guys want something to eat? And coming back, like, hey, come help me with these bags. I said, I'm like, how the fuck do you do this? And nobody can. He's, he's, he's just that guy. And never has ever spent a day in jail in his entire life. Is he cool now? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's his past. That's his past now. <laughs> That's that's his past. At least he said it. I think <laughs> he's gotten from that stuff, and he's he's yeah he's a dad now and all okay. this shit. So yeah, it's a whole different ball game with him. But it's funny your story, your family dynamic reminds me of mine as well. I had uh, my I have two older half sisters on my dad's side. Okay, and with <laughs> my dad. Okay, so. The overlap of my existence and that relationship with his then wife, uh, Murky. We'll okay. put it. Well, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And and uh, my mom's side, I have two younger half brothers that are artificially inseminated and white. And yeah, hey, oh, if I showed you pictures, artificially inseminated, meaning um, they were- uh, t- t- not t- not test tube, but. N- uh, there's a they were less genetically put together and, and kind to, to agree. Yeah, less agree. less crass crass way, but turkey baster style. Got gotcha. you. And, uh, and okay, <laughs> turkey baster turkey style. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Um, and so they're then they're twins, and they don't look alike. And okay. So my family is also. I get Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger twins. Yeah, right. there you okay, go, there yeah, you go. Yeah, when, you. So when you're describing the interconnectedness uh-huh. and the messy. F- I get you. Yeah, I yeah, get you. Yeah, it was it was something, but um, it was all love, man. Yeah, like there was never um the one thing I it was never big beef between my blood mother and my stepmother. They were actually they're actually real cool. How's she doing? And this yeah. and this, you know, um, it's another sh- thing of my. my That's stepmom. a strength. Yeah, she just oh man, just hey, how you doing? How you been? hugs and all this stuff like that? It was like okay, at the end of the day. He's the, the 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 he's what we need to focus on to bring mm-hmm. up and make sure he's cool. I uh, cannot say I had the same experience. Okay, my <laughs> <laughs> I think and and this is to get to the authenticity and the understanding yourself stuff. Uh-huh. Um, it's it seems like you have a pretty good handle on who you are mm-hmm. as a person, mm-hmm. and it was how old are you? 
I am 39. 39. Okay, yes. you didn't sound happy about that. No, you know what? Because I, I want well, to you know what? I don't, I'm like Prince, how Prince speaks on it. I don't really think about it. Okay. I just live because I think all this stuff is like containers. Like, all it's, there's this stuff. Who knows, man, how far it goes back. Even age. I, don't, I just think it's this big container. And the more you think about it, the more you get contained. And my spirit, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to break it down to this horoscope, you know, massage, but we don't like being can, in that type of... Putting yourself in a box. Yeah, yeah, hell no. Hell I, no. I'm i learning that now. Mm-hmm. So the, the upbringing I came from... So a little bit about Riverside. Like, okay. Because I know you're thinking... I know when people think of California, you're thinking beaches and palm trees. Not always. I know I know about parts. Mm-hmm. I, know, okay. I, I just didn't stay there, but I know about it, you know, looking at things like, oh, wow, that's okay. Yeah. Right. So where I grew up, um, everyone was white and, okay. and evil, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, but... But no, everyone. Hey, trust me, it happens here too. They, yeah, they right. exist here too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but everyone's white, and uh, you know, you're the only black kid in the '90s. Mm. It's like, all right, oh, so you're gonna be, you gonna play basketball? Oh man, it just <laughs> judge you're tall. You are gonna play some basketball, yeah, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> Shuck and jive for us, and, and yeah. choose some hoops. Yeah, and, yeah. And like, you know, being in the arts was gay or okay. whatever. So, so everything I was into, I was told that I had to be the opposite of that. Okay. And and it was by everyone. My family was not supportive mm. at all. And so now and then escaping Riverside and coming out here, now at, at fucking thirty, I'm like, okay, I finally have distance mm. and I can unpack and open this little box that is me and figure out like what who I am. Okay. Um so So you graduated. Okay. Yeah. You're thirty now. <laughs> yeah, I'm thirty yeah, now. Yeah, you graduated, man. Yeah, this yeah. is graduation years. Yeah, you're a man now. Like, oh, thank you. Like, yeah, the twenties you were in the yeah. You know, the twenty, thirty, you're, you know who you are. Yeah. Now it's time to deal with it <laughs> and display it twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. Like now it's time. Like you, you, you've been through that bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. when 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 you were thirty. Were, do you feel like based off of what I'm describing? Were you in that same place, or was it a little different? No, I mean, I was, you know what, depending on what was going on. Like, when I hit 30, I was at a de- uh, what I thought was a decent job, a very good, decent, it was a decent situation. I had my own stuff going on, my own place. Um, I, took, I still took care of my mom. Um, I wasn't necessarily, I... I'll say I was boxed, but more on the uh, side of more corporate things. Like, like how this world, like I say, getting up doing the nine to five. I started seeing like the it started hitting me more like this isn't it because where I worked that I ended up working for like let me see for twenty eight. I worked as like seven years, and I should have left like two years in because that's right when it hit me when I got there. It's like yo, this is not you. I knew this was not I'm like you don't this whole setup like this. You're holding yourself back. Like, so you're going to have to set it up to where you can still invest in yourself. I was all about investing in myself at 30. Like, because I felt like I had, I was investing, you know, the music, like I was still doing the music. I had a manager at one point. Uh, bullshit happened. They took some of my music, uh, some songs I wrote and shit like that. Yeah, that happened to me. Um, and uh, I kind of got, wanted to get away from, music for a while until I understood it a little bit more and the business and stuff like that. And then I said, okay, we're going to make another run at it. But me not, inv- I just didn't, I wasn't down with not investing in myself. So I felt like that place was doing that, like taking away from me doing that. And uh, at 30, yeah, hell yeah, I was, uh, I think I just still was shit with women at that point. It was more of a, you know, desire yeah. to have somebody buy you mm-hmm. in all this. But then now I know, know the real deal. Like, what? What's the real deal? I feel like the real deal? Drop some secrets. No, like, no secrets. This okay. is real, man. Listen, if it's meant, you'll have somebody buy you. Mm. But if not, don't trip. Don't trip. Like I, because I had a deep desire to like have like I'm one of those. I'm not gonna call it hopeless romantic, but I was like I wanted some type of love by me, not just a woman to deal with, but like somebody with me on the journey. Because I'm like this, and I'm being real. I feel like, to, let's say a year or two from now, 
we, me and you, make it big in this business. I'm going to have a big issue with trusting people at that point because I don't know if you're dealing with me because of I'm a face mm-hmm. or you really like me for me. So I always ask God to put the person that I'm supposed to be with um, or somebody that I'm compatible with <laughs> to be with because I don't think a soulmate always lasts to 7.8 billion people in the world. It's got to be, I think there's people that fit your soulmate, you know, mm-hmm. um, description of the soulmate and then you can be with them. But I always ask them to put them in my lane before I get to that point. Mm-hmm. And so I can have them with me and I don't have to go through that part of my life because it's not, it's not something I'm afraid of, but it's something I know I'm going to, it's going to happen if I get there and I don't have anybody. If I'm single going into that shit, I'm likely going to be like, oh, fuck this. I'm not getting, yeah. I'm going to stay there. <laughs> like, Strip a hot like sauce in your condoms. Yeah, and, yeah, oh, all man. The... What? <laughs> So what? Yeah, so like you know the Drake thing. Yeah, hell okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's finding your day ones, the people that were riding with you when you were poor, when mm-hmm. you were struggling. Mm-hmm. I I get that, and this business is a grimy one. It it, it attracts just some of the, it's weird i think it's weird how entertainment attracts some of the greatest most interesting beautiful people and the po- just the worst slimiest uh uh what is it um opportunistic yeah. people yeah and i suppose there's a yin yang they guess one feeds off the other maybe mm-hmm. vice versa um mm-hmm. but I, I i know what you mean even with this podcast i i mean nobody really gives a fuck about it now but in the future when it when it grows, when people care about it, mm-hmm. it's it's you care about it. That's all that matters. Yeah, I, I love doing it. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things I've been trying to balance is that this is a business. This is a business transaction in the sense that it is promotion and it is mm-hmm. it was it's being recorded. It's but at the same time, it's like well, I want to genuinely get to know you as a person and vice versa, mm-hmm. and finding that balance of like network but being or having a real relationship is something that i think i'm still trying to understand okay you saying network and have a real relationship at the same time with the people yeah networking with it seems like some people i should just network with yeah other people i should just be friends with and there's yeah. a middle ground in there and yeah, i don't associates, know associates friends. Yeah. it's the same thing you do in life you got your family friends associates um I might, this is my friend, but these are my associates. Sometimes you got to shake the list up. Okay, this is no longer a friend. This is somebody I'll just social, you know, hey, mm-hmm. how you doing? Or whatever like that. Um, yeah, it's the same thing with this. I mean, way I look at it like this, like I think you just said something about how, you know, we being out here and um, something like I missed. A, I'm, I know what I'm about to say, but I'm okay. trying to hit on the part you said that made me think about this. Anyway. You know we're open. We we we're we're diaries. Mm-hmm. We're our, we go out and open ourselves. To all these people sure do. Let them <laughs> into our world. You know our thoughts. Yeah. And everything. And they're either going to show you love for that, and then not. You yeah. know. Oh, that's nothing. I you know. Or there's like, oh man, he really can break down his diary and. Entertaining type of way, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So that's how I look at it. Do you have like a group or a tribe in the the comedy scene in the South Side? Are there are some guys? You... Oh, you mean like clicks? No, no, no. I'm not that. Nah, I know about that. I I, I peeped that during the pandemic because there was like these these clicks. Like, oh my god, like. I'm not. I, I'm definitely not gonna say no names. Yeah, but, be careful. No, no, it's cool. <laughs> okay. I mean, they know. They know who they are. It's not. I love. I. I have no hate toward no comics. They just know during that time, uh-huh. people was only giving the information to certain people where these rooms were mm. during the pandemic, and everybody was not invited. But you see it on social media, and I'm like, what's up? Y'all know I do comedy. What's going on? And it's like, oh well, this is. You got to talk to so and so. Then you hit so-and-so up and so-and-so, ne- uh, your message is sent, but it's never seen. Yeah. So you're like, okay. And then when things start lightening back up, then, of course, now it's not exclusive anymore. Your place is not exclusive. And then now you're back in. But it's cool. I I mean, I there's nothing I was, I was like, I linger on and think, oh, yeah, I remember you. You didn't let. At the time, I'm like, oh, shit, really? Hmm. You know, and I live off experience. I'm like, okay, I get it. I see what's going on here. So. Yeah. 
uh, maybe you don't respect me that much yet to, to allow me that. And that's, you know, that's part of this business too, respect. Mm. The more you get respected, the more people are going to invite you to the cards and, you know, certain things like that. I'll, and I feel, I feel like this, I feel like I had to start over mm. in, to a degree once the pandemic happened because it's like the recognition prior to that was like erased or something. It's like everybody forgot what happened prior to 2020. Like, hey, I've been doing this since 15. It was you don't remember me? Yeah. No, oh, you just came around. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> like, oh, we were doing this room. Okay. And I and I, I now I will say that I had a chip on my shoulder about that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not gonna do this shit over again. And I sat here and was doing this shit in 20, late 2015, 16, and I was up here with y'all. And then I, and once again, that spirit like, cut the shit, mm-hmm. stop fucking around, man. Like, fuck that, fuck them. Do what you supposed to do, like. So you, fin- it's like, it's like I walk outside of myself and talk to myself. Mm-hmm. Seriously. And it's like, so you finna bitch up and let something like that sidetrack you from what we know is going to happen. Mm-hmm. We don't think this is going to, we know this is going to happen. It's already there. It's already it's the- written. It's, uh, I know, I see the houses. Mm-hmm. I know, I see the stadiums. I see all that stuff already. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing the in-between part. The part, you know, I don't want the the fast money part version of it. I want to go through the the process because it's everything that's happening. I need all of this. Mm-hmm. I need all this. I need to hear those. Eh, I need to hear those like, like, oh man, you were good. You know what I'm saying? I need to hear those. Come here, come talk to you. Mm-hmm. I need to meet those heroes, the people I consider heroes in this business, to give me something. All Star Weekend here, mm-hmm. um, when they had an All Star game in Chicago, I got to meet Tony Woods. Tony Woods pulled me to the side and was talking to me. And he's, I'm listening to him, but I know I'm not listening to him. And I sat there and I said, hold on for a second, man. And he's like, you okay? I said, yeah. And I literally like, I don't know, this is just thing I do where I literally clear my mind. And like every, every other thought and everything, you got to go away right now. I'm soaking. I need to be, everything I'm soaking in is right here. And I'm listening to him because he has a unique way of explaining things. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm listening to him. He's giving me, like, the game. He's giving me the game. And he's just like, you control this. You control this. You control that room. He's like, you go up there. Be you. Mm-hmm. They're there to see you. Nobody else. They're there to see you. You understand when I say you? I'm like. Yeah, no, no. He's like, no, you don't, because I see, see it. You don't understand. They're there to see you. Same you that you are in the house. Same you, you that you're out in the street. The same you when you're in traffic and the car cuts you. They're there to see that. Hmm. So when you go back and you look at, uh, I can't think of this guy's name. Remember the guy, um, he used to wear all the black. He said, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. Sam Kennison. Remember when he first came out. He was in a suit. If you ever go back, he's in a suit. Yeah. He wasn't in all that shit. The real him emerged. And when the real him emerged in the comedy game, that's when he took off. That's when he was a name. That was him. That was him. Oh, shit. Andrew Dice. Andrew Dice Clay. Look at him. That that was him. And he talked like, fucking talk like that. But then, look at the years later. This guy had acting the whole time. He, he, you know, change it up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that was him at that time. You know what I mean? The the letter, the oh, and this and this and the hair and all that shit. This is, obviously, this wasn't something he said, you know what, if I do this, I can do this, I can get away. He was that shit. That was what he was. And that's the thing. People struggle so much with being themselves. Yeah. That's why we're the chosen ones. Mm. We're the chosen ones, man. Entertainers. Especially comedians. That's why when you hear someone, oh, you're a comedian. That's a hard thing, man. That's a hard gig. Nobody says hard because you have to be yourself. And most people are not. Are, they, they can be themselves. They can be themselves in their houses. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they work for a little tenure or whatever. Or somebody make them mad. But to be themselves in front of the world, mm-hmm. this is me. It's that thing going back to authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's... I think it's it is like what you're saying. It is really hard, especially in the beginning, to be authentic in front of people. Like it's it's um 
vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And it like okay, so Barten uh, last week. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw my set. Wasn't Before. happy with it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was being very authentic. The things it happened I was, to everybody. You yeah. needed it. You needed it. Yeah, you needed it. Um, and it's it's hard because I was. I'm getting close. I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. Like I can feel like okay, I was being authentic. You were hearing a lot of stuff that was me. Mm-hmm. I just need to make it funny now. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, yeah. But getting through the hurdle of like, I guess I got to be up here and have mm-hmm. you guys that this oh this lady with her with her arms crossed looking at me like, Ugh, nigga, right? Yeah. Talk about eating yeah. ass. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's man, it's like it's it's funny because I'm I what you were saying. You can see the house. You can see the future, for lack of a better word. I can see. What I'm supposed to be, I'm just not. I'm taking those steps, mm-hmm. and it's it's exhausting. Yeah. Like it's difficult. Or, or the the g- earning respect thing. Um, it sounds like you remember, uh, but do but can I give you? Yeah, this, yeah. As, as we're talking here, I just wrote this uh, last week because I do. I, I just write. Period. Not necessarily a whole comedy, but I just write my thoughts out. Uh, I used you know, songs, poems, stuff like that. I just said, be careful of the people, the respect that you pursue, because it's not might not be meant for you to pursue that respect, that version of respect. Mm-hmm. Everybody respect is different, you know what I mean. So, be careful of the respect that you pursue. Oh, uh, we gotta get into that then. Yeah. Okay, okay. Tell me what you think of this, mm-hmm. please. Um, right now, I feel like in the South Side. Okay. I am, I think I am slowly earning a little bit of respect. Okay. Um, now, whether it's the type of respect I should be pursuing or not, I don't know. But with my my logic has been, none of these people know me. Mm-hmm. I'm clearly an outsider. Every time I get on stage, people can feel like, okay, this guy's not from around here. Okay. Um, and I don't have the skills yet to keep up with some of these other guys, but I'll okay. get there. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm keeping my head down. I'm shutting the fuck up, mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna wait. Mm-hmm. And if so, if I get bumped, I'm gonna be upset, but I'm gonna shut the fuck up and I'm gonna wait. And we all had to go through it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if I bomb, I'm gonna be upset, but I'm gonna shut the fuck up and I'm gonna wait. And I'm I don't keep... be upset. Don't you know what? Don't be upset. Tape your tape your sets. Yeah. Watch yourself. See, and and go back and say, okay, I see. This could have been went to this because that's so. That's exactly what I did. Um, everything you're saying you mm. have went through, I've went through. Um, and the thing was with me was like, okay, this is not going to, but I've always been like that in my life. This is not going to happen next time I come up here. Mm-hmm. This is not going to happen next time I come up here. So next time I come back, I get a few more laughs. I get a few more of this, you know. Um, and I just built off of that. Um like you said, you come out, you come out south, and it's a little bit more. You're starting to get a little bit more respect and acclimated to how the crowd is out there, mm-hmm. or just dealing with it like that in the west side, and it's supposed to the north side or whatever like that. I'm gonna bring a comic up, bring a name up that you probably know, Hannibal Burris. Yeah, who's from here? Hannibal Burris has a a funny fan base because <laughs> among the like hood. Black people, yeah, they don't. Some of them don't really think he's that funny, <laughs> but I think he's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm hood, bird, what up? They didn't. They funny. They just think I was from fucking California because of the way I talk. Because yeah. my mother didn't let me like talk slang. I get corrected all the time. And shit. And so, but that didn't matter. They just pick that place. It's just because I talk proper. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I, or whatever. So, um, but yeah, it, it. But it's a known thing, and I think I know he knows. I met him. Same with. Same weekend, same night I met Tony Woods, I met Hannibal mm-hmm. or whatever, um, which was a great night. That was, man, all-star weekend here was beautiful at yeah. Bar 10. Leon Rogers has a lot of friends. You know, Leon's been around. He's the, for a while. Yeah. So, you know, Def Comedy Jam stuff. He's, that's that's a legend. He's just for his city. You know what I mean? He can be out there and be in L.A. and all that shit. He's done movies and everything. But um, he's for his city. So when they come here, they're coming over there. That's why Dion Cole was just here. What was this April now? Dion Cole was here in like December. Mm-hmm. Came straight over there, did a set, well, set set, and then him and you know Dion Cole from here. Yeah. So you know, 
they did something they used to do back in the day when they were at the um, Jokes and Notes, the Cotton Club and all that stuff. They did things like the Dion and Leon um, set or whatever. It was like, hey, Dion, what's going on, Leon? Or whatever. I think I got a tape song. Yeah, and they were doing it. And it's like you're looking at these guys because you look at what look at what Dion's at now. Yeah. You know, Blackish and all this other stuff, movies and everything. And you're like, man, this is crazy. And you're like, why is Leon's not there? But Leon's is just... Le- Leon is just good. Leon chooses yeah. to be here for his city, you know, be here like that. You know what I mean? I can feel I can feel that. Like I I go I mean, I've talked about whew, I keep talking about the I keep talking about Leon, Just Niche, Tiny Thickums keeps getting brought up in yeah, these podcasts. These, these legends. legends. And, oh, sorry. Are you good? You're good. Okay. And um I I I watch and I'm like, man. I know I will be able to do whatever my version of whatever it is that you're doing. It's so funny because I can see it. I understand logically what's happening, but to put it into practice, fucking is so hard. You know what? The day it doesn't become hard to you, you're going to be like, wow. You're going to like, you're not going to even really see it. It's just going to happen. And then you're going to kind of think back and be like, I can think about my first joke I did at Bar 10 mm. that I wanted to land. And it got like two, maybe three laughs. Mm-hmm. Leon liked it. And I, he pulled me to this. I, I, talk, I asked him. I said, hey, what did you see there? He said, I saw this. He said, it's a good joke. He said, but be familiar with your crowd. Mm-hmm. So that that joke was so it had a lot of you know different things that you had to pay attention to so you you can get lost in it or you couldn't and he was like be conscious of your crowd so basically he was saying it would have worked up north mm. here the attention span is mm, not they don't do yeah, this yeah 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 so you got to come <laughs> with something different i said He's verbatim like, I, and they it, were confused it, right 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 exactly <laughs> I, I remember that and he said it he said that to me he says I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Tell you didn't work on it too much. Uh, he had, you ain't worked on it a lot, but I could, you got it off. But you, you got to, you know, perfect it in a little bit more, get it a little bit more solid." But yeah, he said, "I was a good joke. Just know your crowd. Just niche. Get this." He's never not gave me his honest crit. That's the people you want. That's mm-hmm. gonna give you the honest criticism or what they think or whatever. And when you see those people, you make them laugh. You know, it's just like when I said, like you said, you mentioned Tiny last night. I know Tiny's laugh out of anybody. Yeah. Out of anybody. And she <laughs> laughed at a joke I did last night about me saying I uh, when I had sex with a vegan. Yeah. And uh, I said her sweat smelled like lemongrass. And uh, <laughs> and she's, <laughs> she ate that. Yeah. She's just like, oh, man. I said, I had a super vegan. I said, sweat smelled like lemongrass. And she's just like, ah. And I heard. I'm like, yeah. Tiny, fearless. Yeah. Doesn't change. She, she, she. Tiny's who she is. She yeah. who she is, and she's not going to change. And that's the thing. Just niche. Just niche. You're about. Oh, she's funny. She's just. Uh, she just, just, just. She's just niche. She's exactly. Yeah. She's been that in her entire life. Yeah. Funny like that. She and she knows that. The thing about it, she's just showing people. Oh, I'm not doing. She. She probably looking at it like I'm not doing anything different. I told you the pro- The thing is, us sitting here thinking that we have to be something else. That's my first year. I, I was doing. Yeah. Prior and all these I was people. Chris Rock for yeah, a long time. Yeah, I, was I was looking at myself like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm looking at the tape like, what are you doing up there? Yeah. It's not you. Me. Yeah. Right. And then the first time I started doing me, and I, I would just get like three topics and go off the dome. I didn't even write to him. I would just go off the dome because I'm funny in conversation, just mm-hmm. talking about shit. And I'm like, okay. And I went up there, and that was when I started getting the most laughs. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see what's going on here. I guess, and I think it's a time thing. It's a time, and it's it's just putting in the work which I've been doing. But mm-hmm. it's it's like if, like you were just saying, one day I'm gonna notice, like, oh, this is easy. I've already noticed it actually. I I did a I did a mic out in Indiana. Okay. So I've been in I've been in Chicago for seven months. Haven't gone anywhere but Chicago. Okay. Went to Indiana, and I was like, this. Right. What the? Fuck we're playing team ball out right. in this bitch. What are they doing? <laughs> this is easy. What? This is so right. easy. <laughs> Right, right and 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 then i came back and i was like oh wait oh, oh, uh-huh. all, right, all right we got right. fastballs so, coming there again. you go there you go and it was like it's like oh okay it's it's happening it's working it's just patience and continuing to 
do the work, uh, the very difficult work of digging through all of the trauma mm-hmm. from what I had experienced. All the people that said I was this and that, and right. and and it's like, okay, get, get all of those fucking voices out and figure out who this is. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Like, I my instinct is to be like, well, what are your perception of me? But and I do that a lot, and it's like, well, it doesn't matter your perception of me; it's my perception of me. But it's it's also kind of how my brain works. I like to bounce off of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a point that is gone now. No, that's cool. I get what you're saying. You like the you it's like you're trying to find a way to maneuver and know when to hit certain gears when you're up there and okay, like you say you want sometimes you like to feel the energy of the crowd or you wanna know if they're liking it or not, but then that all that's the you're thinking of so much up there. Mm-hmm. So secret. They can see that. They can see when you're actually thinking. Mm. They can see that. They can see when you were like, "Oh yeah," uh, they, it, and and that's the thing mm. you have to get past. My set last. Did you you watch that when you was at bartender? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What were your thought? Could, you, could was I doing that? Because I don't know if I was or not. Mm. I think you had a moment where you did. Oh well, you, you were like flowing. You were flowing for the most part. If ninety yeah. percent of it, you were flowing. But I'm gonna tell you, even if you do it for ninety percent of the time, that one little that one moment. catch it, and then it's <laughs> like you gotta re- come back with a bomb. You gotta come back with a missile real quick yeah. to get them out of that, because they're like, oh, you know, yeah. And they're like, oh, there you go. And then he's like, oh, well, here we go. And then you're looking at Don, and he's about to go, oh, hey, <laughs> yeah, come on out here, and uh, oh, whatever like that, you know. So. That I, that's that was my only thing when I like I had to get past the light. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, and, Le- and Leon kept saying, "Stop acknowledging the light." He like the acknowledge it, but don't let them know you saw it. That's yes. it. Keep going. That means you have thirty seconds to a minute to do your last joke. That does not mean hey, you got to end it right then and there. So don't let it shake you. You see it? Okay, go ahead. And um, I do certain things up there just to like if I know how much time I got. And I know I want to get through a certain joke or whatever. I'm saying, okay, well, I'm not going to have time to do that. I know. Start doing your jokes here. Getting an actual stopwatch or something like that or time yourself. Is that, okay, this joke takes this long. Can I get it shorter than that? Okay, can't get shorter than that. All right, so I know I can never. If it's a five minute and they're saying, oh, a solid five, I cannot. I have to either go straight into this joke and do some little ad-lib shit here. Or mm. what? That's this is it's just starting to learn. you Figure out how to maneuver with the time you get, you know. And there's sometimes some places if you're you're hot, mm-hmm. then I got to say shit. You keep going. The most I've ever done um, was like 17 minutes, and that was at bar 10. And Don was like, "You did was uh, 16 was 16." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I didn't know you could do that." And I'm like, "Do what?" And he's like, "You did you know 16 minutes." I'm like, get out of here, man. I thought he was bullshitting. He's like, no, look. And he showed me. And I was like, oh, okay. But I was just up there flowing, man. I was the last coming here tonight. People, I was like, okay. Because the headlines has already left. People that were somewhere. And I was there, but the crowd really didn't leave. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, fuck it. I'll do it. Because I was about to say, nah, fuck it. I'm not going to do shit. And I did it, man. And it was a, such a great feeling. Um, and... I'm gonna tell you what's gonna really push you. This this is what pushed me. Okay. You're gonna have a lot of things that push you. What's gonna really hit you that you're doing the right thing is when somebody you have no idea who the fuck this is mm-hmm. see you somewhere and say, Hey, you do comedy, don't you? Yeah, so you're funny as fuck, man. And you can go but they business. You're like, Yeah, I do. Yeah. When you get the first time you know first when you get that, when you start getting like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Just complete strength. I don't even remember them being in the room. I just saw the lights, but they were out there looking at you. That's what happened to me last night. Laugh factor. People come up to me. I thought, "Good set, man. Yeah, you're fu- dude. You're fucking crazy, man." <laughs> I'm like, man, that's what I was like. I wanted to hit. I knew when I touched that stage, like, I'm like this is why somebody's got to call me fucking crazy yeah. when I'm up here. And when I, I if I don't hear it, then I'm fucking crazy. When I leave out of here, I'm gonna feel like I didn't do shit. Even if I heard all those laughs, I gotta hear you're fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's and just blasting the past. My first mic comedy bar. Mm-hmm. I went in there with a thought process. I said, "Listen, 
I really don't have nothing but really one joke. If they laugh at this, I'm on to something. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then maybe I might have to reconsider this. They laughed at the joke. Mm -hmm. And all it was about was saying, um, I got mad at um, white dudes for taking their white women that had big asses. Because they didn't used to like women with big asses. I remember the 90s and shit. They liked their women like Pamela Anderson, thin, big titties, Mm -hmm. no asses, nothing like that. Then all of a sudden, asses started getting real popular. It, but we liked that in the 90s. We liked that they didn't like ass because we would go and get some of the white girls that had asses for the black guys. But then now we're you're taking away our white women that we were going to. Wait a minute, when did y'all like start liking asses? And I said, wait a minute. I said, y'all like the pancakes, we like the biscuits, okay? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. Yeah. And they ate that. They When I heard them laughs, man, yeah. that was it. I said, that's what I came here to do. I don't give a fuck what happens after this. Yeah. They laughed at that. I wrote that. I actually sat there and wrote that. Yeah. And it's been, that's what, yeah. And whew, I've been on this, I've been, this has been in my hand ever since, man. I um I I'm going to have to wrap it up. We'll okay. do about an hour, but I okay. would really love to come with you. I'll hit you up more often. Okay. I just want to, because I've only been to Laugh Therapy and, and Bar 10. I've been to Meatball Mondays once. Okay. Um, but I know that there's Francis on Tuesday. Francis? Mm-hmm. Francis, I'm gonna be, let me get it to you right in the raw. Uh, boy. That's intimate. Okay. That's pretty much, uh, well, it's about to get hot again. Okay. So you'll see. But when it gets hot again, it's out back. That's pretty much this wall gone. Okay. A tent. People in the tent. And you're up against this wall pretty much. And everybody's like right there. Perfect. And when I tell you, if you're not... They, they are not... They Even in the bar setting now, they trust me, it's still the same type of thing. But they will let you know. And you will know <laughs> if you're not... They're just going to... You're like, okay, shit. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, man... They're gonna give it to you. Yeah. They're gonna get and if meatballs in that I'm not meatball uh, um ball head, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying this because he did to me. He, I say, I guess I'm not gonna do it. ball head. Like, get your ass down from there. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo>! Get your <laughs> But I remember and I laugh like more I say. But I actually kinda said something to him like I said, Well, judging by ball head's face, I guess I'm not doing it. He's like, yeah, you judge right. Get your ass, <laughs> right now. Get your ass down from there. Yeah, and, I, and ball head is, is the dude, man. He the dude, uh, Leon the dude. And like you said, you're going to get the love here, man. Yeah. Ask questions. You talk to me, ask questions. Everybody's going to give you the game. Yeah. You know, you just got to go and execute. You know what I'm saying? I Yeah, man. I, I want to ride. I need to ride with you places. <laughs> yeah. Dude, thank you for doing this. No problem, man. I appreciate it. All right. All right. <laughs>